for open standards. And just a heads up, this is probably the least technical. I wanted to do something on Hadoop, and they said no, so I'm doing open standards. Uh, but first, some terminology. There's, there's an old joke, and it's not very funny, that the nice thing about open standards is that there are many to choose from. Uh, in the geospatial domain, as you know, we have standards such as KML, uh, GML, City GML. Uh, there are some formats such as uh, Shapefile. They're so popular that they're almost standards in themselves. Uh, we exchange data in a variety of formats, CSV, XML, JSON, even PDF. Uh, other domains such as uh, statistics have their own standards such as SDMXL, which I've never actually used. Um, so what is a standard? In my mind, a standard is, is a blueprint. It is something that uh, allows people to, to build something. Uh, when an architect builds uh, a building, he provides a, a blueprint so that a builder, uh, engineer, inspector can look at it and say, well, if you build this according to plan, the building won't fall down and it'll stand. Um, but, but a standard is more than just a blueprint because it has to be something uh, that other people agree upon. Um, if, if, there's not the, uh, if there's not the consensus or blessing, then we typically call that standard a specification. And by abusive language, we sometimes confuse standard and, and specification. So, in actuality, a standard is a specification, but not all specifications are standards, if that makes any sense. Um, then we have de facto standards. Uh, the de facto standard is a specification that um, has become so popular because people just decided to use it, mainly because maybe it was implemented in some sort of program that uh, software that got considerable market uh, acceptance. Um, but these specifications may or not be open. Uh, they may not be publicly available without some sort of uh, licensing agreement. Now, the main problem with de facto standards is that they're owned by a single vendor who can and often does change it uh, when they want to. You know, a prime example is Amazon Web Services or AWS. Uh, AWS is the de facto standard for cloud computing. Um, then we have standards that are created through consortiums of uh, companies, uh, government agencies, uh, educational institutions, that use uh, an open uh, consensus process. Uh, the prime example of this is the OGC, the Open Geospatial Consortium. And then we have uh, uh, bodies such as ISO, the International Standards Organization, that creates uh, de jure standards. Uh, examples of, of de jure standards include um, ASCII, uh, TCP IP, uh, 802.11n, the Wi Fi protocol. I often see confusion between open standards and open source, and I typically see that among people who haven't done software development before. And I'm probably preaching to the choir, but open source is code. It's concrete software, and it may or may not implement open standards. Uh, open source is created in a, in a very open environment with community involvement. It's publicly available. Um, and the, one of the great things about open source that I like is that it can often speed up the adoption of open standards, like for example, if you have a, a beta release of software that implements some new standard, uh, the two can help work out bugs in each. And one thing I find interesting is that you typically don't see open standards groups creating open source and open source groups creating open standards. So if you have any insi insights on that, I'd, I'd like to uh, hear them at the end of this presentation. We see open standards uh, spanning three areas, uh, technology, data, and services. There are technology standards to efficiently manage data, uh, standards for databases and storage and communications and servers, uh, standards such as SQL, which is both an ISO and an ANSI standard. Uh, we have data standards uh, to uh, work with, interoperate with uh, geospatial data. Um, in Europe, we have the European Inspire Directive, uh, and in the United States, there's the Federal Geographic Data Committee uh, two examples of bodies that create geospatial data uh, standards. Then we have services standards uh, to consume geospatial services, and great examples of these are uh, WMS, WFS, Web Feature Service, Web Map Service from OGC. And we see open standards benefiting uh, a host of people within an organization from software developers all the way up to C-level people like CTOs. Um, for software developers, open standards um, promote uh, code reuse, um, 
empowers them to uh, exploit reference, reference implementations and open source uh, for enterprise architects. Um, open source, uh, open standards rather, um, promotes uh, resilient design patterns. It gives them flexibility when they're designing systems um, and allows them to uh, react easily, quickly in a re really ever changing uh, IT environment. Uh, for project managers, uh, open standards promote, um, I'd say, effective budgeting through the reuse of, of software. Um, allows them to swap out software if they need to. Um, it's also uh, good for uh, uh, cost reduction in a project. Um, for IT directors, directors, open standards help them to align their IT strategy with uh, policy and technology shifts, and to and it also fosters innovation and in, in research research agendas. And now at the C level. Um, open standards uh, help them to align corporate strategy with like long-term uh, technology developments. And it also gives them a certain amount of market insight, which hopefully can drive new business. Now, those, those are just some of the uh, benefits to internal stakeholders within an organization. But uh, we also see open, open standards as, being, uh, as adhering to good, sound public policy. And I'll use the UK as an example. So in the UK, the Cabinet Office has mandated the use of open standards in all government IT systems to, to ensure that they are interoperable and can talk to each other. In April, I think it was April of this year, uh, the Cabinet Office released a report called the Open Standards Principles. Uh, it contains seven principles aimed at uh, placing the user at the heart of the decision-making process around standards, um, enabling suppliers to play on a level playing field, um, supporting uh, sustainable costs, supporting flexibility and change, um, making sound decisions, quite simply, uh, using a, a, a fair and transparent process when uh, choosing standards and also trying to be fair and transparent when actually implementing those standards. And I think all of these have tremendous business value. You know, from this diagram, which I stole from the report, uh, the ultimate vision is to have systems with open interfaces, open protocols, and op open data formats, so these systems can actually talk to each other across government agencies. I, I'm really into open standards, open source, and open data. And I think at the heart of, of all of this is the user. Why are we doing this? It's for the user. Um, open standards promote uh, improved data access, especially access to data during emergencies, crises, conflicts. Um, improved uh, data sharing among stakeholder organizations, um, improving just the understanding of, of the benefits and need for, for sharing that information, uh, improving communication, uh, which, which in turn uh, uh, does community building, uh, improves data quality and documentation, increased data access. Another aspect of, of open standards is thought leadership and a little bit of self-promotion, I'll use Ordnance Survey as, as an example. Uh, since the time we first uh, released our uh, products in, in digital format, we've, we've had the use of open standards has been at the heart of our, our strategy, and we've continually tried to uh, uh, develop open uh, standards both in the UK and, and globally. Um, our distinguished Director General, Vanessa Lawrence, is the co-chair of the UNGGIM Committee of Experts, uh, setting the, the agenda for, for uh, global uh, uh, geospatial information. I can never remember what it stands for, but it's the United Nations Initiative on the Global Geospatial Information Management, UNGGIM. Um, we've provided technical, ex technical expertise to inspire, to create uh, European-wide uh, standards. Uh, we continue to support Inspire programs such as ELF, the European Location Program, to create uh, European data and protocol uh, standards. We were a major supporter of the UK Location Program, and I think we led by example in the use of w WMS. Uh, we also provided expertise uh, to create the Location Discovery Metadata Standard in the UK called Gemini. And there's something about uh, eating one's own dog food, so we, we have a, a our flagship product, OS Master Map, is, was released in, in GML and also as a commercial WMS. And we have uh, a free and commercial WMTS called uh, OpenSpace and OpenSpace Pro. We've been a long-term 
technical member of the OGC, I think since 1998, but I could be mistaken. It's roughly about 15 years. Um, uh, our DG is on the board of directors. We have uh, someone on the uh, Global Advisory Council and, and also the uh, Business Value Committee. Uh, we played a key role in developing CDGML and GeoSparkle, and hopefully now the emerging points of interest uh, standard. But we're heavily involved in ISO TC211. ISO, ISO TC211 is the geospatial arm of ISO, so they create all the geospatial standards. Um, and we're very involved in linked data. You may have seen some of the presentations this week. Um, we provided uh, guidance on the uh, development and maintenance of uh, linked data uh, URI sets for, for location data. Um, and we're involved in, in a number of bodies, such as the W3C Government Linked Data Group. So open standards look really good on paper, but do they really work? And I think one way of, of ascertaining that is through PlugFest. Um, a PlugFest is an interoperability experiment. So the OGC, Oregon Survey, with the support of AGI, will be hosting a PlugFest over the next few months to really test for OGC standards, GML, WMS, WMTS, and WFS. Um, what we want to do is get all the ven vendors, uh, open source commercial vendors in, in the room, so Snowflake Software, Esri, Pitney Bowes, uh, QGIS, you name it, and um, techies from organizations across the US, public sector and non-public sector, get them in a room and just really, really test the, these standards. Um, the outcome of this will be uh, two things. The OGC will be creating an engineering report, which will be quite technical, and we'll be creating a best practice paper. Now, the best practice paper is meant to be sort of a, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So it'll be everything that we find it, it could contain information such as, well, we tried this standard and it worked in Map Info Professional, but it didn't work in, in ArcGIS, or we tried this in QGIS, it threw an exception, so we, the workaround is to do this. It, it's a way of, of just giving people guidance in the UK on, on how to use these standards within, within the software that's available. Um, so if you're interested, there's a teleconference uh, next week on the 25th at 10.45 British summertime. Uh, the cutoff date is the 2nd of October. Uh, the first sprint will be at uh, Ordnance Survey in Southampton on the 17th of October. We'll have a second sprint on the 9th of December. Results will be, will be presented on the 10th of, of December. And if you're interested, come grab me because I'd really, really like, like uh, people to participate in this. That's actually my last slide. It, uh, before I close, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, you were the plug fest in New Zealand with Denise. Is that the stuff? I am aware of it, yes. Yeah. 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 Through, through Denise McKenzie. Did anyone hear that question at the back? Yeah. I think we don't like that at the microphone. It would be good, yeah. be, be good to touch base just to pick your brain. I actually have a, I have a question for you guys since uh, I just went through some of the benefits of, of, of open standards. Can anyone think of some negative aspects of open standards? That was a quick hand. <laughs> Hello, Paul is the um, Defense Science and New Technology Labs. Um, we, we feel that open standards are great, but we do have one issue from our point of view is that uh, potentially one issue fits all. So by that I mean quite a diverse uh, community involved in developing it. So potentially everybody in this room could take a commitment to do their best, but maybe not all could be interoperable. So that's one of the problems that we have with the government is ensuring that when we say it, We're so find more and more we're having to profile the, the core standard from an agreed way of uh, implementing it. We've actually had so to do the same thing with, with our WMS. Uh, so certain aspects of it just we thought were, were lacking. So we implemented some, some workarounds. So um, and we intend to feed them back into the OGC. And, and this is not a criticism against the OGC, but in general, standards bodies take a long time to adopt and revise standards. So you may find something that, that uh, falls short, but then it'll take six, nine, 12, 18 months to, to by that time you've, you've moved on. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely a limitation that I see. Anyone else? Uh,
think that my question, that question might pertain to the previous, I could be wrong? Uh, 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 can you rephrase that? I thought your last question was, um, is there any downside? So it's open standards. Yes, yes. So I think uh, someone has to maintain them. Yeah. I wonder if there are always enough people to maintain open standards. Well, one thing I like about the OGC is it, it's it's consensus based. So it it's the OGC. Sorry. I was saying one thing I like about the OGC, and I'm just using that as an example, is that it's consensus-based uh, and it involves a large community of people. So the OGC, the, the actual staff is, is rather small. I don't know how many, probably under 20 people. But the people actually working on the standards are thousands, you know, myself included, just people who are interested in geospatial and want to contribute somehow. So I, that's, that's a way of maintaining the standards, is having that community make sure it's, it's striving to, to to work on them, continually revise them, you know, adapt according to changes in technology. But if you want to put new features in the open standards, it seems to me that it takes a long time until they get uh, approved or something. It, it does, and, and, and that is one of the uh, negative aspect, aspects of, of standards work, is that it just takes a long time. And, and for many reasons, it takes a long time to build that consensus and, and make sure that the standard is solid. shortcoming that I have found working with some of the OGC standards is there are a few elements I think are missing. And if you want to stick to the open or to the standard, you can't implement a feature that's not part of the standard because then you're not part of the standard anymore. So it can be uh, constraining in some way. If the standard is not if the standard has a flaw in it, you you have to go with that flaw even if it uh, otherwise you don't want to. So that's Point. the drawback. I agree. Point well taken. Hi. Oh, thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I want to state that with an example. Now, I find it great that there, is, that there are open standards. But uh, one of the possible clauses, and I will explain that with the de facto standard, once there is a standard, you are stuck on it for a long time. For instance, we all know what shapefiles are which were a de facto standard, which are very great, but they have short which But today, many people are still using them. So it's good that we have no open standard, but I think there's a, a threat that we, if we have so many standards that there are things that we don't think about right now, but we are going to be stuck in it for a long time. And that's why we have companies like Safe Software doing quite well, <laughs> just to convert from one standard uh, format to the next. No, I, I, I agree with, with what you're saying. <coughs> okay, thanks guys.